Hello everyone. It's been a little while since I made a video. I've been kind of busy uh, reading some books, something I don't don't normally do a lot of, but I got some new contact lenses, a better prescription, and I had some really interesting books, uh, interesting for me. And so that's kept me busy for, for a while. Uh, one of the books is a, a book I picked up at the Friends of the Library sale. It's called From Tinfoil to Stereo. It's a really good uh, history of recorded sound from the, the early days of Thomas Edison experimenting, recording on tinfoil, all the way up to when the book was first published in 58, uh, stereo uh, LPs. And then the other record is, or the other book, record. the other book is uh, History of Columbia Records, called The Label. Uh, it's about 500 pages. They're both really thick books. Um, but a lot of really interesting stuff here. And, uh, I'll try to take some notes from these books and uh, put together a video just about some of the things I came across in these books I thought was interesting. And then uh, I'll show you some records. Uh, I've been trying not to pick up a whole lot of records since the big Friends of the Library sale because I picked up so much stuff there and it's just getting ridiculous. I'm running out of space to put all this stuff and I really need to weed some stuff out. But, you know, it's always fun to dig through stores and see what's new. I got some time to kill before picking my daughter up from school. I try to stop in a thrift store here and there and see what I can pick up. Uh, so I'll show you some of the stuff I got from the uh, Goodwill store. They put out a, you know, a mess of uh, new to them records uh, a week or two ago. Picked up this for my wife. Uh, she collects Disney records, and this one is uh, one of I think three records that came out um, supporting the uh, Fantasia. Uh, movie by Walt Disney. Um, let's see. And uh, from the same store from Goodwill. I uh, didn't have a jacket, but this is Tony Matola, the guitarist. The album's called Mr. Big. Um, and there's other guitarists on here. I think Bucky Pizzarelli, Don Arnone. Um, Maybe Al Kyol, I can't remember, but some of the you know Italian guys from New Jersey that tend to play together are on that record. Uh, really good guitar type record. You know you see these command records all the time in thrift stores and the antique malls, and the Tony Motola stuff is usually pretty good. It's usually like multiple guitarists on there, kind of orchestrated together, and it's kind of jazzy. Another Disney one I picked up at the uh, Second and Charles store. I think it was like two bucks or something. So I picked this up for my wife, another Disney one, The Parent Trap, on the uh, Disney Buena Vista label. That was one of their two labels. They had Disneyland Records, and then Buena Vista was kind of more of the adult type stuff, and then the Annette Funicello type stuff. And from the, uh, let's see, the uh, Alachua County Humane Society, our local Humane Society has a thrift store. Picked up some jazz stuff, some uh, old Errol Garner, and this one is the uh, English pressing here on London Records. So that was kind of cool. I like that label. And uh, some Dave Brubeck uh, jazz impressions of Eurasia. And this one is a Dutch pressing on Fontana. I guess this would have been on Columbia here in the U.S. So that's kind of interesting, even without the jacket. And then I had to pick up a few more. They have like a $5 minimum on the debit card purchases. So I picked up a few more that I wasn't crazy about, but they're kind of interesting to have. Some Lionel Hampton. This is live recordings from 47. And uh, this one on Spinorama. Kind of generic looking, but these are live recordings from... 1961 on Malibu Beach. Kind of cool. And uh, some Al Kyola, the guitarist here on United Artists. Um, with some band from Miami, I guess he kind of discovered, and I think he's like orchestrating them here and playing along with them. Um, yeah, nothing seriously interesting, but I love this inner sleeve. Kind of psychedelic United Artists thing there. I love those colors. 
And let's see, from uh, the second in Charles store, the big box, it's kind of like uh, half price books, I guess, but it's run by Books A Million. They have three bins out front of uh, free stuff, and it looked like they'd gone through their records and decided to, to pitch some stuff, um, then out the collection, I guess. And so I grabbed some stuff, uh, just anything that looked interesting, I grabbed to bring home and listen to, like uh, Edie Gourmet, the singer here, wife of Steve Lawrence. Uh, just figured I'd give it a shot. It's okay, I'm not gonna keep it, but uh, Mort Lindsay, um, anything on organ I'll give a shot uh, this sounds more like kind of like a Wurlitzer organ or something or kind of like what you used to hear in the shopping mall and the guy would be playing the organ in the store trying to get you to come in not really my thing uh, Maynard Ferguson uh, trumpet player um, yeah, I never really gotten too much into him I've got like a box set of his work uh, like live at Newport and, it's okay. Uh, this one's on Mainstream Records, which kind of kind of caught my eye. It's a good label run by Bob Shad. Um, again, this one doesn't do a lot for me. Uh, some Tommy Dorsey in his orchestra on RCA Victor. Here, I'll give it a, a listen. I'm trying to listen to some of this older jazz in like the 30s and 40s. Um, I think there's Frank Sinatra sings on some of these tracks. I think Buddy Rich plays drums on one of them. It's a collection of, collection of stuff from the late 30s to 46. And then this another one, RCA Victor, taken from the top. Uh, a bunch of different artists recorded live and sort of in their element. You know, jazz people playing in clubs in New York. Um, yeah, it's got Louis Armstrong. Jonah Jones, Al Hurt, uh, Della Reese. Kind of interesting. I gave it a listen and enjoyed it. Uh, this just caught my eye. I'd seen this in the store before and thought about buying it because uh, I recognized the name Frank Wes. Um, he played on some of the like Savoy jazz stuff, um, some of the early jazz recordings from the I guess, early 50s. Uh, but this one is, I think, from the 70s, and he's backed up by the Muscle Shoals rhythm section. Um, kind of a cheesy cover, I mean. But I popped it on the turntable, and it's pretty funky stuff. Um, definitely going to give this another listen. Some uh, RCA Living Stereo release. Uh, you know, if these things sound kind of anything interesting, they're not like the Melancrino strings or... Something really sappy, I'll pick them up. Uh, Del Wood was a, uh, let's see, she was kind of like a, this is the queen of the ragtime piano. I played at the Grand Ole Opry. This one was produced by Chet Atkins. So, I figured I'd give that a listen. It's got the original RCA inner sleeve. Uh, this is kind of cool. This, um, on Audio Fidelity. Um, this record label put out a lot of like uh, sound effects type records and but they're probably best known they put out some of the very first stereo recordings um, in 1958-59 and this was one of them this is one of the first I think eight I saw listed in the book um, from tinfoil to stereo and it's a, a whole band of guys playing harmonica which is really weird um, I'll give it a listen and Check out the stereo in its early days here. Uh, some John Mayall from the Blues Breakers. Uh, I guess at this point he went to the U.S. and found some U.S. musicians and recorded with them. It's kind of interesting because there's no drummer in this band. Um, kind of the bass player propels the songs along without drums. So kind of neat bluesy music. Uh, this one on Jazz Tone, the Jazz Tone label. I really like that label. I think it was like a mail order type stuff. They'd send, or subscription, they'd send these records in the mail. And uh, this one is uh, Dixieland music, Dixieland now and then. So the idea is on one side of the record you have kind of the traditional Dixieland music, jazz. And then the other side is kind of the Chicago version when the guys move from New Orleans to Chicago and uh, established kind of a Chicago version of the New Orleans jazz. Um, 
So you got Jimmy McPartland's Chicago Rompers on one side, and Paul Barberin's New Orleans Stompers on the other side. And on the back, they give you some nice uh, kind of write ups history and a little bit about what's different and the different styles of music. Um, yeah, the sleeve is jacket's pretty much shot here. I always like that label, kind of cool. So that's on Jazz Tune. Um, back in there. And then this one's kind of neat. Uh, Herbie Remington and his steel guitar. Uh, some early uh, steel guitar recordings, I guess from the mid-50s or something. I'm not a big country music fan, and I think his background is in country music, obviously playing steel guitar, but it's it's not your typical like Hawaiian music steel guitar. It's more of a country sound. And interesting. I'm definitely going to keep that one. Uh, another RCA Victor. I've always seen the Three Sons and just wonder what the deal was with them. Kind of uh, jazzy. This one adds some uh, like Latin percussion to it, but it's not really going to not going to be a keeper, I don't think. I think the Three Sons, one of the guys played accordion and one maybe played organ or something or I don't know. Kind of easy listening instrumental music. Uh, and speaking of this one on command, uh, kind of showing up there, 35 millimeter film, um, audio recording method. Uh, this is Enoch Light and his orchestra recorded at Carnegie Hall. Just picked this up to kind of give a listen and see what the deal is with the stereo. 35 millimeter film uh, system and hear what's so wonderful about it. Uh, this was kind of cool. Um, I have another copy with the same name. This is on Crown Records, kind of a budget label out of Los Angeles. Uh, way out Wardell. This is Wardell Gray, the uh, sax player. Um, this one's a little version, a little different than the other version I have. This one has some tracks with uh, Buddy Colette on it, um, and you can't really see it. I don't think you can see it at least. But there's a lot of like little, uh, they look almost like bubbles in this vinyl. And that's, I've seen this, I saw this in the store before when it was like two bucks and passed on it. Because it looked like it'd be a real uh, stylus killer on the turntable. But actually when I cleaned it up and popped it on the turntable, you don't hear any of that stuff. You don't hear those little bubbles. It's really weird. And it actually sounds pretty good. Uh, this one I saw in the store... You know, and had like two, three bucks on it and passed on it. But it looked kind of interesting. I was always curious about it. And it's actually pretty good. Uh, you know, despite the acoustic guitar on the cover, it's uh, electric guitar, uh, kind of jazzy. Um, not really big names. Joe Scro, S-G-R-O. Uh, but he was a cousin, a cousin of uh, Joe Venuti, the... Uh, jazz violin player who played in Paul Whiteman's band and uh, I guess was like a teacher as well hadn't really heard any of these guys but it's nice kind of laid-back uh, smoky you know what do they call it uh, music for an after-hours mood and that pretty much describes it nice kind of smoky jazz guitar uh, some Dwayne Eddy twisting and twanging we gotta give it a shot for free this, uh, this one was kind of interesting. It's um, a band called Crossfire Choir. Looked like an 80s new wave band. That's what they are. They came out of South Florida and moved to New York and were discovered, you know, playing around like kind of CBGB scene. And apparently courted by several labels and signed with Geffen Records. He made all kinds of promises. They'll make them, make them big and all this. They recorded this album with Steve Lillywhite which is actually what caught my eye. Yeah, I don't really pick up stuff I don't know, but I saw his name, so I picked it up. This is a five-track uh, kind of radio promo, but this is on Passport. What happened is they recorded this album with Steve Lillywhite. Geffen kind of said, we don't hear a hit single or anything. They sat on it. They re-recorded some tracks. There's another producer on here, Stephen Galfis. And... Uh, 
they sat on it and sat on it and finally they managed with a lawyer I guess to break free of Geffen and release the record on Passport a couple years later um, sounds okay I'll give it give it a few lessons uh, definitely new wavy kind of sound from the mid 80s David Liebman the uh, sax player this one on A&M Horizon I picked up another album by him uh, about six months ago on the same label is really good and this one's basically him and this guy uh, Pee Wee Ellis who's a sax player electric piano player um, and I guess he's yeah he does play electric piano uh, gold stamp promo kind of fusion-y jazz stuff um, a lot better than you guess from the kind of cheesy cover there he played with Miles Davis um, and his electric Miles' electric period early on. But he's done some stuff on ECM as well. Uh, David Liebman and Richie Byrock. Duo stuff. Uh, some kind of classical. Um, Bolero. Ravel's Bolero. One side, excuse me, one side of the record is uh, Bernstein conducting Bolero. I guess Leonard Bernstein. But the other side is Bolero on the Mighty Moog. So Moog synthesizer stuff. Kind of cool. And that's on uh, Columbia Masterworks. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, I had to pick these up. They were free. Uh, Chet Atkins on RCA Camden. Uh, usually RCA Camden was like their, their, uh, their budget budget line but I guess this one and uh, another one here Chet Atkins and his guitar they originally came out on the Camden label so these aren't really repressings reissues They're the originals and uh, the most popular guitar also on RCA and another one on Camden music from Nashville my hometown so I'll throw those in the Czech collection and uh, I grabbed this one just for the uh, the jacket uh, from Streetwise, kind of a hip hop label, New York based with uh, the producer Arthur Baker. You know, I've got some of their records, but they're just in generic kind of black cardboard sleeves. I'll throw one of those in this. And then from the uh, Habitat for Humanity thrift store, I picked up this record. I'd seen it before and kind of passed on it because it's, it's Crown Records. Yeah, they're a really cheap label. They don't give any information really about when stuff was recorded and who played on it. Uh, but this one features Buddy Colette on sax and uh, I'm trying to remember. I think it's Howard Roberts. I think it's Howard Roberts on guitar. Um, kind of bossa nova type type jazzy stuff here, but pretty good. Um, pressing quality is not that great. Of course, it's it's Crown. Um, they got that really cheap, generic looking label. But for a dollar, I'd give it a shot. Still in the original shrink. So that's it. Those are my recent pickups. I'll try to do a video soon about the uh, those two books. So there's some pretty interesting stuff there, and it's kind of forced me to think differently about a lot of uh, a lot of stuff from the the 40s and 50s I've seen around thrift stores and antique malls, and uh, also kind of interesting interesting things about how people reacted to the changes and the formats that uh, kind of echoes today and how people feel about CDs or reissued vinyl and all that. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.